Before I Die Written by Jenny Downham Read by Tasha Lewis I turn off the light and watch my family through the window. They stand together on the lawn, sorting through the last of the fireworks. Dad holds each one up and shines the torch at it. They choose one, shut the box, and all three of them walk away down the garden. Perhaps I'm dead. Perhaps this is all it will be. The living will carry on in their world, touching, walking, and I'll continue in this empty world, tapping soundlessly on the glass between us. I go out of the front door, shut it behind me, and sit on the step. The undergrowth rustles, as if some night creature is trying to hide itself from me. But I don't freak out. Don't even move. As my eyes adjust, I can see the fence and the bushes that line it. I can see the street beyond the gate quite clearly, lamplight splashing across the pavement, slanting across other people's cars, reflected back from other people's blank windows. I can smell onions. Kebabs. If my life was different, I'd be out with Zoe. We'd have chips. We'd be standing on some street corner, licking salty fingers, waiting for action. But instead, I'm here. Dead on the doorstep. I hear Adam before I see him, the guttural roar of his bike. As he gets closer, the noise vibrates the air, so that the trees seem to dance. He stops outside his gate, switches off the engine, and turns off the lights. Silence and darkness descend again as he unclips his helmet, threads it through the handlebars, and pushes the bike up the drive. I mostly believe in chaos. If wishes came true, my bones wouldn't ache as if all the space inside them is used up. There wouldn't be a mist in front of my eyes that I can't brush away. But watching Adam walk up the path feels like a choice. The universe might be random, but I can make something different happen. I step over the low wall that separates our front gardens. He's locking the bike to the gate at the side of his house. He doesn't see me. I walk up behind him. I feel very powerful and certain. Adam? He turns round, startled. Shit! I thought you were a ghost. There's a cold wash smell to him as if he's an animal come out of the night. I take a step closer. What are you doing? He says. We said we'd be friends. He looks confused. Yeah. I don't want to be. There's space between us, and in that space there's darkness. I take another step, so close that we share a breath. The same one, in and out. Tessa, he says. I know it's a warning, but I don't care. What's the worst thing that can happen? It'll hurt, he says. It already hurts. He nods very slowly, and it's like there's a hole in time, as if everything stops this one minute where we look at each other so close, is spread out between us. As he leans towards me, I feel a strange warmth filtering through me. I forget that my brain is full of every sad face at every window I've ever passed. As he leans closer, I feel only the warmth of his breath on my skin. We kiss very gently. Hardly at all. Like we're not sure. Our lips are the only place where we touch. We stand back and look at each other. What words are there for the look that passes from me to him and back again? Around us, all the night things gather and stare. The lost things found again. <laughs>